Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up. And today I'm here with this beautiful singer, Alex Blandino. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Rave It Up. Believe it or not, it has been four years. Are you serious? Since your last on the show. Oh my God, <laughs> that is a long time. Holy crap. I know. But we, for the audience, we have not lost touch at all. If anything, we are like sisters now. So to have her back on the show today is just... A dream come true. It's, it's. I think I've. I think we were just ch- chatting off air about how this is probably the most excited we've ever been for an interview. Yes, because it is just going to be so casual and like how we always chat. And a lot of you may remember that this girl was my date to the Helpman Awards last year. Yes, I was. <laughs> you can go check our vlog out on the Rave It Up TV YouTube channel. That was a really fun night. Wasn't that was it? so fun. Who needs men? <laughs> Let's just go on dates together. Now. You were last on the show with your former band, Urban Opera. Yeah. Fortunately, you guys split in 2016. It was only like a year after the interview, believe it or not. I know. (laughs) And I personally know why you guys split and we've chatted about it a lot. But for the audience, can you let them know what happened? Do you guys still keep in contact? Is everything still friendly? <laughs> <laughs> so in a nutshell... Or give us the, or give us the uh, dirty The goss. juicy yeah. goss. <laughs> no, it wasn't that dramatic. Um, in a nutshell, we had a difference of opinion and we had been friends for such a long time. Um, one of the members is actually my brother. So um, as we sort of went through the journey and different things were happening and, you know, like different opportunities and different contracts were coming up, we realised that our vision for the group and our careers and everything in general was completely different and Mm -hmm. half the members were on one page and half the members were on another page and in order and so to preserve the friendships and not ruin the relationships that we had like I I don't want to ruin the relationship with my brother or you know with with Joey and Anka like you know they're beautiful people they're the closest people in the world for me um so we decided in in the best interest of the friendships to dissolve the group and maintain the friendships maintain that closeness and um you know separate artistically and and creatively and that's what we've done and yeah so we're still amazing friends and um you know it's it was it was a good decision because now everyone's doing what they want what they want to do because joey do. wanted to get into acting as well and uh, no that was anka anka? anka wanted to get into acting um joey wanted to joey get was musical more, theater yeah, as well and yeah. opera which he's doing and will wanted to get into film and tv so you know everyone's now doing like their own thing and you know my life has just gone from one thing to another and it's just boom <laughs> So. You and Joe, you still sing together now and then, don't you? Because I yes. have seen it on social media. Yes, yes. Yeah. And he still sings with Anka, and you know, now and then we all we, and we all, we all get together now and then, especially for bowling. That's kind of our thing. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of singing all together, it's no, more we maybe a thing just to do. Yeah, like know, we did it for, for my <laughs> uncle. Yeah, yeah, he was running a, a Christmas carol event, but that was like maybe two years ago that was the last time we sang together, together. As, as a group so you know I do miss it I do miss the beautiful four part harmonies and the excitement of working in a vocal quartet but you know it is what it is and now just you a know, memory exactly yeah. beautiful memories fun memories exciting memories you know a lot learning a lot about the industry as well yeah. as a group you know, and now so. solo. And now solo. Yeah, <laughs> it's very exciting. Maybe just for Christmas, you guys can just get together yeah, and you exactly know, do a thing with just the family yeah. and have a little sing around. I don't know, piano or whatever we have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, you are also a singing teacher on the side yes. of your music career. Yes, I how am. do you find balancing everything? Scheduling. <laughs> yeah, you must be amazing at time management. <laughs> oh, I, I, I could be better. I'm better. <laughs> we, we could all be better. Yeah, no, I've got like uh, three, I schedule three and a half days for sp- just singing, teaching. Yeah. And then Mondays is my busiest day. So I tell my agent, don't book me on a Monday because that's the day that I teach the majority of my students. And then they sort of just work around my times and then it's just yeah just I mean like there's also you know times where I'm at a show in in the daytime and I get stuck or like the trains run out or like I, I, I get stuck talking to people and then I have to cancel at the last minute or have to move people so I'm very lucky that my students do understand what my life is like and yeah. they're you know like if they're okay like if you know if I have to cancel last minute or you know if at the last moment I go hey so um, there's a fire and yeah. I can't come and teach because there's no train 
trains. Um, they're like, oh yeah, no worries, and they just move. So it's, it's really good. Out of control. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I try not to. Obviously, I try not to um, cancel at the last minute if I can help it. But if I can't help it, I can't help it. But um, yeah, no, I'm no, really. I couldn't lucky. ask for a better teacher. No. <laughs> Go check her uh, songs out if you haven't already, <laughs> or our previous interview as well. <laughs> now I could not wait to chat about this when it happened. <laughs> But now we can chat about it on the show. Uh, in 2017, you supported Mark Vincent. I did. Which, as you know, he came on the show recently. <laughs> Loveliest guy. Was even chatting about you off air. Aww. Um, <laughs> so lovely. Both just raving about you. Aww. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> just raving it up. How was your experience with that? Oh, I was fantastic. Again, like, you know, he was lovely. The band was amazing. I've made some really great friends from that. Still keep in contact with most of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was just lovely to work with someone um, more established in the industry um, that's been through, you know, different experiences to me. Um, and it was great to work with just a fantastic group of musicians and get you know like the touring like touring was fun i love touring touring I, is your thing uh, it's really my it really is like uh it's just fantastic like you get to see all these really random places in australia that you wouldn't normally go to yeah and um you get paid to go so exactly <laughs> win-win to see the world and do what you <laughs> exactly. love to do yeah it's fantastic yeah i love it so yeah no it was a great experience did you find like your name got out there a little bit more by being with mark vincent on 100%, that tour yes because yeah everybody knows about mark vincent you know yeah yeah definitely and really you know, people ask me oh do you have a cd and i didn't at the time but now so, you do now i do we'll chat about that <laughs> soon and then also in 2018 you toured with Itali- italian tenors yes the Italian tenors. <laughs> was that very similar to the tour with Mark Vincent or um, completely different? In terms of the... Because they're not mu- from here either. <laughs> no, they were from Sicily, which was amazing. Um, and they were fantastic as well. Like just incredible vocalists. Oh, um, yeah. Really great guys. And again, the musicians were just fantastic to work with. And the tour experience I always love. <laughs> um, in terms of that tour, it was very different because... It was with a trio. They, mm. they were a vocal trio. Um, some of the songs were similar, but a lot of them were different. And it was just a very different vibe, very different show. Yeah. So um, in terms of what I had to do, it was the same. I had to do a 20-minute set before the, they got on, which is the same that I did with Mark Vincent. I did a 20-minute set, then he did his set. Um, the only difference was that they went straight through. So I only did one set where it was with Mark. I did two sets. I did one set, then he would go on, then there'd be an intermission, and then I'd come back on to another set, and then he would do his set, and then it'd be the end of the show. You yeah, so many it, shows like that. Yeah, so yeah. it was yeah, so it was a little bit different in terms of the structure, but yeah, apart from that, like they were they're just very amazing uh, mu- vocalists and musicians in their own way. So with the shows with Mark Vincent, you had to stick around. You couldn't just be like, cool, I've done mine. I'm going to go now. Have a good show, Mark. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. It's like, i got to perform again, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Plus, you know, like that was my ride back. So <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. get back to the hotel. If you're in the country it. towns and stuff, yeah, you don't, <laughs> exactly. can't really but, go anywhere. <laughs> that's right. Don't want to be walking around Dubbo in the middle of the night. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could see some really cool things. But anyway. <laughs> You're a woman. You got to be stay safe. Exactly. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know as well, you do sing. You obviously sing solo, but you're also in a rock and roll band called High Jinx. Yes. Well, not not rock and roll. That rock, 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 <laughs> pop, rock, and to covers. me, it's like all the same. To be honest, but you know, <laughs> totally what do I know? Genre. I'm not a singer. <laughs> So do you have a, a favourite between being solo or in a band, oh, or is it like they obviously no. both have great things? Yeah. Too. See, the thing is, um, I started off in bands. I started off in the Latino club scene. I, I was part of like the salsa bands and for a long time. And that was like the thing. And I love being part of a band. The camaraderie that you get, the sense of family that you get from a band you can't get as a soloist. A solo, yeah. Even though you're working with um, in session musicians and who are all lovely and you know everyone gets along really, really well. Well, I don't have a problem with anyone so, yeah. <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> um, uh, the the camaraderie that you get from actually being a band is very different. It's it's that whole team spirit. You know, like you have a show to do, you have to lug in your own gear, you have to set up your own gear. You know, like even even I help. Like you know, there was a gig that we did at Beta Bar, and 
it, there was a lift and we couldn't park on the street. So oh. this is actually a really funny story. So we had this gig, right? It was a corporate gig and we weren't allowed to stop on the street. So basically where the, the, the bar is, is just there. And then there's like the street. And because it was one of those no stopping zones, but we had to load in, you know, all the speakers, the lights, mm. the sound, the instruments, all that sort of the music music stands. There was a lot to, to to lug in. There was like a trailer full of stuff that we had to lug in and we couldn't stop. So basically what we had to do was the guys would take the stuff out of the trucks. I would load up and they would like run away before the uh, before the ticket person. Yeah. You know, the, the, the what are they called? The, I know what you're talking about. You yeah, yeah. The, the ticket that, person, the patrol yeah, the, person. Yeah. yeah, the one that gives you the fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was loading in all that by myself, all the speakers, like speakers taller than me and heavier, like way heavier. I was doing that by myself while they were like loading, quickly loading, running away before they got booked. And that was like, <laughs> that was like a good hour that we did that. And then at the end of it, I was like, Oh. No, I actually have to perform, damn it. <laughs> exactly. And in heels. It's like, okay, now I've got to put my face on. You logged all that in heels? No, 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 oh, no, no, okay. no, 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 yeah, so it was full on, but yeah, you just those those sort of adventures is is what I love about being in a band, and you know, I, I love nothing more than the boys from Hijinx. So, hello guys, <laughs> shout, shout out, out. <laughs> shout out to them. You haven't always been in that band though, have no. you? Because I did see on Facebook that in what 2016 they had you know different people in yes. there, and yeah, yeah, so they found you online yes. or? Uh, well, long story short, um, I was in the moment in in the moment I was thinking about you know what. I really miss being in a band like I my solo stuff was was kicking off and I was doing a duo show with with Joey mm. and um, but I was like you know what I really miss being in a band and I was like I wonder if there's any bands out there and I just still left it didn't do anything about it a couple of days later um, Rick from from hijinks just happened to be on the same music Facebook group and he was like he just found me because they were looking for a new singer because their singer had had left um, for I think she was I think it was work and and pre- pregnancy I don't I don't yeah. remember the, I don't remember Probably the starting a family yeah, yeah. I, there was there was a reason that she left that I don't remember the, I don't remember the details but long story short they were looking for a singer and they were and so Rick was like looking they had to audition people they you know weren't they weren't satisfied with how they fit into it it didn't work for whatever reason there's a million different reasons why a, a vocalist won't work um, anyways he was looking through the group and he's like and he saw my photo and he's like this one this girl will do it. <laughs> and so he messaged me, no mutual friends, no nothing. And he's like, hey, so um, I'm from Hijinks and I, we're looking for a new singer. We're auditioning this Friday. Is it something that you'd be uh, interested in? And I was like, yes. I really yes, manifested I'm- that into yeah. your life. I was like, <laughs> and I was like, yes, I am. So I, I said, yeah, I am. I auditioned, got the job on the spot and the rest is history. <laughs> wow. The rest is really history. Yeah. You, you fit so perfectly into that band as <laughs> well. Know, and right? you've got that look. You've got that. Re- it's funny. You're like, you know, you're a hybrid act really because you fit so well into the rock scene. <laughs> and then you've got the ball gown and then you fit into the opera scene. Like, <laughs> I'm malleable. <laughs> not many people that can do that. So... <laughs> Very unique. Thank you. <laughs> and do you know how they came up with the name Hijinx? Or um, is that X Manager? X Manager. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was, yeah, was just like, what an interesting yeah. name. It is really, yeah. I like it. I was like, yeah, it's really fun. I was like, it's funky. They do 80s glam. I like, oh, they do rock. Oh, yes. That's what I want to do. Yep. <laughs> Definitely audition. <laughs> yes, exactly. I was like, yes. Yes, I am. And you can sing in multiple languages as well. Yes. English, Italian, Spanish, and French. Yeah. Now, I did and read... German. And German. And German. She <laughs> was speaking German to me this morning. Just, yeah, don't get but anyway. Um, <laughs> I have read, though, that you can't speak French. No. So how does that work? Is that hard? Uh, <laughs> yes and no, because... We have no idea what you're singing, then. Uh, yes and no. To a degree. <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. So with... Because um, I did a, a lot of operatic training. I did all my Amy B exams. I did my Bachelor of Music. I did Opera Voice. I did Masters of, Masters of Opera Voice. I did all that sort of stuff. And so when you're learning about that, you actually have to learn the languages, how to pronounce it, how to speak it, how to read it. Um, you don't, and, and you, and because you sing it so often and you see the same sort of patterns, um, you get, 
an idea of what it sounds like and what it, what you're actually meaning, uh, what you're singing about. And the other thing as well is that when you when you when you are studying opera and opera voice, you do have to sit down and analyze not just the technique behind it but also the meaning and you know the character like what are you singing about you can't just get up in an opera and sing you know um, a, a song and have no idea what you're actually singing because then you can't be true to the song yeah you yeah. can't show that emotion so either. yeah so mm-hmm. even though I can't speak it um, you know I can't speak French or German I can sort of understand it in the context of the songs because I've had to do it yes yeah so good so, you're getting up there and you know exactly what you're singing yes, about you know? exactly La Vie yeah. en Rose for example like that is yeah. such a legendary song yes you want to get up there and know that exactly. what you're actually singing exactly about. yeah exactly and all like the big arias especially like you don't want to get up there and not understand what that particular song is about because then you're not and then it's just noise really to the audience because yes. most of them don't speak those languages you know most people especially because in a majority of my audiences are in Australia so yes. they, they speak English <laughs> you know and um, yeah so if you don't convey the message emotionally and with the body language, it just becomes noise. Well, it's like the difference between like a fantastic performance and then just an okay performance. Yeah, you know? oh, exactly. Yeah, they just sung it. Yeah, exactly. Nothing special. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh yeah, pretty noise. That's nice. That's pretty noise. Yeah, she's got a nice <laughs> voice, but not a good song for her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It does really show your talent when you are nominated for multiple awards. Yeah, In 2018, exciting. Alex wa- did, was nominated for an Ace and, and a Mo Mo Award. And then this year, you're nominated again for an Ace Award. Award, but not just one, two. <laughs> yeah. Blown away. I am so damn proud of you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Are you nervous or do you think you like got in the bag? You're like, yeah. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you're up against. Uh, I haven't looked at your oh, other I'm nominees. I'm up against some big names. Yeah, I'm up against like amazing female vocalists um, like Monique Montez, who's, uh, who's my idol and I love her. So if you're watching this, Monique, I love you and thank you for everything that you've done for me. Um, just yeah. honoured to be yeah. with her name. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, you know, like really just big names in the industry. So it's like, woo! Okay. <laughs> I was like, when I saw the list, I was like, because when I got the email, um, I saw the Rising Star nomination. I was like, okay, and I kind of expected that one. Um, and then I s- scrolled down. I was at my, I was at my best friend's house, and I was like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Anyways, and you're like, I don't have a chance in hell. <laughs> and then, then, then it was really funny because then, like, she, I was like, I was showing her. I was like, oh look, I got nominated. She goes, yeah. Anyway, so she's scrolling through my phone, and she goes, Alex. I was like, what? She goes, look. And then it was um, and the nomination for Female Vocalist of the Year. And we both just went, <laughs> And I was like, holy crap. I was like, I was like, oh my God, that's insane. Okay. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to breathe. Oh, I'm just going to breathe. breathe. Just going to breathe. And we're okay. It's okay. <laughs> so yeah, so that's how that went oh, down. Good luck. Overly dramatic. I know. I'm Have old. you already picked your dress for the evening? No. It's because, coming up quick. <laughs> I know. But you know what happened? I had originally seen this amazing dark green sequin dress. And then at the last minute, they told me that it, it, I had to use either red, gold, or black. Red, gold, or black. Because um, I'm not allowed to say why. Oh, damn it. All right, oh. never mind. I just realized. I was like, uh-oh. I'm releasing, but yes, okay, I'm you're releasing sh- a secret I'm not supposed to You're be. restricted for the <laughs> colours. It's classified. <laughs> which which is annoying. Yeah. Can you get the same dress in like red or? Um, no. The dress that I saw is I've only seen it in dark blue or dark green. Hmm. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm just going to get it anyway because it's a beautiful dress. Um, but I won't be able to wear, wear it for, in the future exactly. for other I mean, gigs, like, photo shoots. Exactly, like you know. It's oh, because like, I did notice the dress she bought for Helpman Awards. She ended up I <laughs> wearing did. in a photo <laughs> shoot. I was like, I remember that dress. <laughs> I saw it first. <laughs> I saw it first. <laughs> she wore it for the first time with me. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so buy that dress. Spoil yourself. You work hard. Exactly. <laughs> Now, this is big as well. You did recently sing the national anthem at the Knights versus Dragons game in Newcastle. Yes. Was that nerve wracking at all? Because obviously, in front of all Australians, we all know the national anthem. <laughs> you don't want to screw up the words. No, you we really know if don't. you screw up. <laughs> it was actually a rush of an experience. I was kind of like not really into it until I stepped onto it because they kept me sort of like away from the from the from the stadium um 
grounds, like the oval. Yeah. What's it called? The yeah. field. The field. The field. The, yeah. field. the yes. oval field. It yeah, is. that thing. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so they called it, sort of kept me like in the wings and in, in the thing. So it was like, it wasn't real until I actually, actually stepped, stepped onto the grass and I went, that's oh, a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I walked in and I turned around and there was just a sea of people. And I was just like, this is really cool. This is great. And <laughs> don't I screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, don't screw it up. You've sung the anthem a million times. Don't, don't kill it. <laughs> yeah, so you did, you did good. Yeah. You didn't screw up from what I could tell. <laughs> no, I didn't. When no, I watched I it. Yeah, and it was um, only one verse, so... Yeah. Well, it is a big deal when you get asked to sing the national anthem. Hundred percent. So. And yeah. you're gonna do the same thing for Anzac Day. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 That's I a did. big day to do it. Yeah. So it's so good fun. Don't screw that up. No. And that's two verses. <laughs> yeah. Well, most of us don't remember the I second know, verse. It's hilarious. Actually, when I did actually, it, if you screw up that part, we probably won't even know. <laughs> actually, when don't. I don't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, when I did um, Anzac Day last year and I went into the second verse, because that's on the brief, that's on my, um, my my job brief to do the two verses, I heard, oh, she's doing two verses. <laughs> like people talking, I was like, I think I told her to do that. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah, but exactly. I will do it for you guys. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you better study up then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, before we move on to talk about your new album, um, I would love to chat about being a woman in the entertainment industry because I think we could both agree, you know, it has its challenges, yeah. especially being a good looking woman like yourself and a really amazing voice. But have you ever found it difficult to kind of prove yourself and go, I'm, I'm more than just my looks and let me just show you what I can do, especially when Ooh. it's quite male dominated? <laughs> that is a very, very long and interesting. We got it all day. <laughs> <laughs> I better sit back. And <laughs> um, okay. So I think I'm just trying to word this. Because and I, I know she gets uh, quite heated in discussions oh, yeah. like this. Oh yeah, all about when so it comes get to ready, females. Guys. <laughs> Female empowerment is all about is everything I am about. Um, but it's oh, there's just so much to cover. Well, I don't that's even why know I thought where I'd bring to it start. Up. Um, I think it, for me, it's a mixture of different things. Um, it's a mixture of being a, sort of an up and coming um, artist in the cl- in the Australian club scene mm. um, because I've always been in bands and musicals, operas, um, vocal groups, and it's only the last couple of years that I've actually been a soloist. So it, I'm, even though I've been doing this for a long time, it's only really recently that I've, I've branched out as a soloist because I started off in bands, you know, and I was in bands for a long time. And then after I did that, I did independent operas and musicals. And um, instead of, so my experience as a woman in the industry is 100% you do have to prove yourself because when they see you and, they, and, and, they, and they're like, oh, she's a young woman, they sort of instinctively not everyone. I'm not going to say it to everyone because, like I said, majority there of there are some, yeah, majority of the people nice that people. I deal with in in general, like 99% of the people that I deal with, are genuine and fantastic and encouraging. And there's that one little percentage that you just go, all right, okay, you just wait. We both experienced <laughs> it. Yeah, it's and um, like, it's, how dare you? Yeah, you don't even have to say it, exactly. but I can see it on your face. You can see no, that I'm a thing, woman. Yeah, and... but they, but the thing is that they do say it. Well, sometimes, yeah. yeah. But then there's, there's those real yeah. sl- and, um, and slick people that are just exactly. like, it's written on their face. Exactly. And so in terms of, but in terms of the musicians, as 99% of musicians that I work with are fantastic. I have no issue with. Um, and, you know, uh, being with uh, like a band, being in a band, you get that sort of protection, uh, like that group protection. So, you like, know, when... Yeah, I got my guys from Hedging Theatre. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, like, when we do, when, when we do like, cl- clubs and pubs and, and, and bars, I'm always safe because I've got my boys with me. Mm. Um, when as a soloist, um, they do see me in a sort of different light. Um, and I have had instances where I've had to tell an audience member, member that is inappropriate. So, I don't know if you want me to give you an example. <laughs> No, that pretty much tells us. Uh, yeah, so um, because they, they they see you as an entertainer, so that they think that it's fair game, and that's not yeah, the case. No, it's like hell no. Just because I'm in a in a in an evening gown, and it's and it's that's, that's the thing. It's like 
I mean long gowns. And yeah, you're not dressed you know, slutty or anything. That's or, right. Yeah. And I've had... I'm not asking for it. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, asking for it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. Oh, anyways, point of the story is, yes, there is challenges because they see you and they think, oh, she's an entertainer. Entertainer. She's fair game. And it's like, no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. And um, they'll, they'll, they'll push it. They'll push, in, uh, they'll push the boundaries and they'll say things like, oh, you know, that's a lovely dress. It'll look better off. And it's like, okay. They say that stuff? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. And um, I, had, I, had one, I had one audience member say to that to me and I was like, okay. Okay, firstly, that's sexual harassment. Yes. Secondly, that's inappropriate. And he's like, oh, no, no, I can say it. My wife's here. I'm like, I don't care if your wife's here. That's not the point. The point is not Makes that your wife worse. is here. The point <laughs> is it's inappropriate and I don't appreciate that. Yes. So, you know, and it's, that's, there's always that sort of like 1% of people that do that and you just go, oh, okay. yeah. I'm just going to calm down <laughs> before I do something that I'm going to regret. Regret, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, in terms of that, but in terms of the majority of the time, majority of the time, it's it's great. Everyone's encouraging everyone and um, everyone's very, very loving and very giving. But there's that 1% that challenges, it, challenges you and pushes you. And you always have to set your boundaries. You always have to say, well, no, that's inappropriate. Don't talk to me like that because you cannot speak to me like that. You cannot come up to me and say to me, after I've just done a show... And I'm selling a CD. You can't come up to me and say, oh, your dress would look better off. No, that's inappropriate. Mm. That's sexual harassment. Like, you've just sexually harassed me in front of your wife. Like, yeah. how is that? How is that okay? Exactly. On any plane of existence, that is not okay. And, you know, that's, that's the, for me, for me, that's the biggest challenge because they see me and they go, oh, well, you know, she's, she's, good uh, looking shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's young. She's good looking. She's just saying, you know, I can say this sort of stuff. No, you can't. You can't. I'm say still that. human. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, just because your wife is here, that's even worse. Yeah. You're disrespecting me. You're disrespecting your wife. And you're respect disrespecting women everywhere because you've just objectified me from a 45 minute show. Like that's I disgusting. I hope the wife had something to say to oh, him afterwards. Oh, she didn't say anything. What? That, she did not say anything. Well, she who just knows? Sort of, Maybe they got home and she said something. I don't but know. You don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I looked at her and she sort of just like went like meek, and I just went. <sighs> I could just go rant so on. So he wears the pants in that relationship. Mm. I just wanted to rant and I was like, you're in public. Don't yeah, do that, Alex. <laughs> how could you do this, woman? We're supposed to be exactly. girl power. We're supposed to be there for each other. Yeah. Are you going to stand up for this? 100%. In oh. there. And I was like, oh, I'm just to control myself because I'm in a public place and if I make a scene, I'm going to get in trouble. Oh, well, I'm sorry this sort of stuff happens to you, but yeah. it really, I, I'm glad we actually spoke about it today because yeah. there are a lot of people that are listening that... Uh, not in the entertainment industry. Yeah. And don't understand that. Yeah. It is something that we all the cop time. a lot. Yeah. And, and even not as entertainers, just as yeah. women in general. We have to, you know, we you know, we get subjected to this stupidity twenty four seven and it's just it's exhausting. Yes. It's exhausting and it's annoying and you know, like it's we have the right to just walk down the street without being harassed. It's really not that hard to ask. We just want to live. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sort of <yeah. laughs> But thank you for. I, I know you got very heated, but um, no, I've, I've seen you worse. <laughs> oh, fair. This is, talking this about is this. The, this is the calm, Alex. <laughs> exactly. This is the tame version. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm glad we did speak about it, and you yeah, did thank, have a really good answer you, to yeah. that. So I do have you. a lot of passion for female empowerment and women's rights, so it's a it's a good platform to just go blah. Well, if you want to come on to the show anytime to chat about it, you are very welcome to. <laughs> we shall do that. Yes. You know where. You know where I am. Exactly. <laughs> now, your new album is out now. Yes, called it is. A New Life. Yes, it is. And I know this is probably a hard question because it's probably like picking a favorite child, but do you have a favorite song off the album? I do. Oh, you do? Okay, that I was do. easy. Most I people do. don't. <laughs> no, I do. Because um, it's a covers, it's a cover, it's a covers album yes. of my favorite opera and musical theaters, things that I do in my show and also um, things that I do within the, especially within the Italian community. But in terms of my favorite song of the album, it's actually A New Life, which is why I called it A New Life. Because oh, I was yeah. about to ask that. I was like, I know it's a song off the album, but is yeah. there a reason for that? <laughs> Is this 100%. a new life for you? Just to get really deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so DNM moment. DNM moment. <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. It is a huge transformational song. So, um, not a lot of people know this about me, but you know, like, just because my life is great now 
it hasn't always been that way. Yes. You know, like I was born into chaos. Um, you know, my life was up and down, being a first generation migraine. Mi- migraine. <laughs> migraine. <laughs> We're going to try that one again. <laughs> being a first generation migrant. Yes. <laughs> you know, like I arrived in Australia, no English, no, no family, no money, up and down within the poverty line. And, you know, I've had to, you know, work hard. And I was the first person in my family to go through university in Australia, not, in, not overseas, but in Australia. So there was a lot of pressure um, on me growing up. And, you know, like I've had ups and downs uh, with just life in general. I'm not going to go into too many details because we don't have time for my whole life story. (laughs) But it's in the first interview. (laughs) We did speak about the whole... You being grown up into that yes, in the first interview. Yes, we did. So yeah, we did. Yeah. So I will um, link it with this interview, guys. <laughs> oh my god, that was so long ago. I remember it. I was blonde back then. You were. Holy crap! That was that long ago. Oh my god. Time <laughs> and, changes. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> point of the story is like, yeah, like my life is great now, but it wasn't always like that, yes. and I've had to work really, really hard and really do a lot of soul searching and soul growth in order to get to this point in time which is not where I want this is not my end goal this is just another step it's a stepping stone that's right exactly like where I want to be I'm closer to it than I have been before but I also had to do like a lot of a lot of karmic stuff a lot of lessons a lot of like just fixing soul searching yeah it's just a chapter of the book <laughs> exactly and that's we're gonna just... get to the end of the book eventually <laughs> exactly so that's Not yet <laughs> yeah and so this song um a new life it's from jacqueline hyde and basically it's a, a story about a girl who wants to exp- uh, wants to leave her past behind her tumultuous past behind and start fresh and that's that song was when I, I, I gravitated towards that song when Urban Opera split up and I was in the process of becoming a soloist because I was very lost. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? That's 50% of my income gone mm. because the group broke up. And I was like, what am I going to do? And so through, you know, through a, lot, a series of different events, I'd met my agent and, um, you know, so then trying to do that whilst finishing off the urban opera chapter chapter was hard it was heartbreaking and trying to work out how am I going to do that while my income is going up and down and I'm like <laughs> oh my god what am I going to do you know I had bills to pay and I you know I pay my, my, my full time job is my music so when a one one job which is like a huge chunk of my income went away which was urban opera I was like crap what am I going to do I was like mm, okay we can do this. It's all right. It's all right. We've been through worse. <laughs> and just trying to work that out. And then that song, A New Life, the lyrics from that speak to me on so many different levels because everything about that song was me back then Aww. and me now. So that's why it's really... So deep. It's really <laughs> special, yeah, which is why I was like, no, this album has to be called A New Life because this is a new life for me. And, you know, yes. like the past is finished. It's done, it's closed, that book is closed, and now we're on the sequel. Mm. (laughs) And I really want to know too, have you thought about getting into musical theatre? Because all the musical theatre songs on that album is, oh, incredible. I I can see you on stage. Like when I'm listening to it, you know, I like to listen to music, close my eyes, especially for the first time listening to it, and I can just, I can see you on stage. Thank you. I'm like, damn girl! (laughs) I've done it. I mean, there's, yeah, the... Uh, what the first I've seen you do all the opera stuff and then yeah. this is totally different and I'm like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean I do eventually want to do like um, not just the independent like I've done independent musicals yeah. and that was fantastic um, but there's not there's not enough income in that so you yes. know and for someone who works full time as a performer I need that stability mm. because you everybody know. needs that That's stability right. exactly yes. <laughs> so even though I would love to do more professional stuff um that's something that I have to do in the future because right now the the opportunities that are presenting to it to me I have to take because it's all working in my in my benefit all the solo stuff my solo career is growing I'm establishing myself as a soloist and as a as as a a female artist um in more ways than one not just as a as as a club performer but as a front woman as and and now as well as an original artist but that's going to be next year. 
Um, so oh, yay! So yeah. you look forward to. <laughs> yeah, so that's all happening this year. So working on an originals project, um, but that's not going to be launched until 2020. So right now it's focusing on just building my name, building the covers, building my my audience in the Australian club scene, and um, and then next year establishing me as um, as an original artist. But um, what was the question? <laughs> I forgot the question. Musical theatre. Oh, musical theatre, yes. So eventually, Pretty much did answer it, yeah. Yeah, so eventually I do want to go into like full professional stuff. Um, but at this point in time, I can't just take three months off my no, solo yeah. career. Yeah. Well, right and now, I'm so proud of you for you've really you. grown it from the ground up. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's that's Keep what, doing that's it, girl. <laughs> Conquering the world. Thank you. And your brother William did do the cover art. He did. This album. He did a very good job. Shout out to William. Yes, my brother is ridiculously talented. He's one of the most intelligent and talented people that I know. And sometimes I want to slap him because <laughs> You're too he's talented. so talented. <laughs> but sometimes he just goes and changes his mind. So I'm just like, okay. So did you ask him to do it? Yes. Or did he go, no, I want to do it? No, like, no, no. I asked him to yeah. do it. I was like, William. <laughs> So I need a cover. Can you do it for free? Uh, no, I actually paid him. Oh, good. Because I said, you know, I'll like... I'll pay you in love. <laughs> no, I'll cook I, you some meals. <laughs> I paid him. I bought the program for him. Like, he had to upgrade Photoshop and a whole bunch of different um, computer programs to do it. So I was like, you know what? I And I, I constantly go to my brother for so many different things. And, you know, like, he's my brother, so he never expects me to pay him because, you know, like... He loves me. It's and family, yes. It's family and I love him and, you know, but I was like, you know what, you need to get these programs and I was like, you know what, that's 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 going to be like my payment because um, I don't want him to go spend money on things that he wouldn't normally spend money on because of me. Yes. So, you know, I was like, you know, yep, look, here, I'll buy you all these presets, all these different things that you need to do and just, just do it. And so he did it. And he did a great job. He did a fantastic job, yeah. It's like three of you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's so much symbolism in that. Well, we need we need more Alexes in the world. So I saw that and I was like, it's a good start. <laughs> and how was it to have that finished product in your hands? Did you cry? I was flabbergasted. Of course you were. Yeah, because um, even I was, and I <laughs> didn't have the real thing in my hand. Oh uh, yeah, I should, oh, I should have brought it. It's all good. I was gonna bring it and I didn't. It gave me um, the songs anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, well, lot the it's distribution... the new day and age. We just have the MP3s. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So when I received the product, um, I went to actually physically pick it up from Napoli Verace. So that's a, a Sydney-based Italian distribution company. And um, when I sat there, because I was like, you know, I, either the least I can do is say thank you in, per- in person for them, you know, pr- uh, promoting it, distributing it, funding it, all that sort of stuff. Because mm. that wasn't something that I actually went out and paid for my myself that was funded by them they were like you know we're going to take a chance on you um let's do this and i was just like yeah so i'm eternally grateful nice of them it is it's fantastic so when i sat down and i said thank you to franco i was like whoa it's like seeing it there and i was like okay so it's actually real you know and i've self-published um albums in the past um not the solo albums but um like urban opera we did that ourselves and that was up on soundcloud that was up on um itunes uh we've taken it down now but it was up in the past um and we did that we had like the whole ep launch but having my own one there and something that you know was not just it's it's one thing to do it yourself which is very rewarding it's another thing to have somebody else believe in you yes do you know what i mean and so for me even though I've done albums in the past and I've done lots of recordings and lots of collaborations, having someone believe in me as a product, as a soloist, as an artist, that was special. And to see it there, I went, it's real. Okay, so, all right. Let's do this Let's thing. do this. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. shout out to them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so when you release the, in, you said in the future, a originals album, can we expect a tour or oh, it's UK all just kind of up in the works so right so much more. No, that one I can't say a lot about because that Just it's, promise me you'll come back on the oh, show. Oh, you'll be the first one. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you and Triple R. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, yeah, no, that is going to be a whole other ball game because yes. that's got some 
I'm not allowed to say, but it's got some big names backing it. So oh. it's very, very exciting. Okay, um, everyone, get excited. It's just, it's just, it sucks that I can't say a lot of things. I, I'm like under contractual agreements yeah, not yeah. to say stuff. And I'm like, I understand. Ugh. And I just want to go blah. But I can't, you know, and it's a, yeah, so. I know the feeling, you know, <laughs> that project I showed you last night. Oh my God. My audience don't know about it yet. No, but they will. <laughs> yes, they will. Very, very, very soon. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so, um, what was the question? Yeah, whether you're going to tour it as well. Oh, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there'll be like heaps, heaps of different things. And, you know, I've got some tours coming up anyway this year. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which is exciting. I love doing that. That's like my favorite thing. So I just got to manifest a couple of more support acts this year and then we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah. Cool. Mark Vincent, come and support me. <laughs> oh. yeah. I don't that think that's going to be funny. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> hey, we're both good buddies with Mark now. We'll do so. a collaboration. I, I, don't yeah. think, I don't think he'll be my support act because... He's, um, he's too big to do that. Yeah, now. exactly. <laughs> I'll just have to reach um, his, his, his level and then we can do like collaborations. And that'll be different. That'll be nice. Yeah, just <laughs> come on stage for one exactly, or two songs. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, now, yeah. do you have any advice for the listeners who might want to follow their dreams of becoming a singer as well? Oh, um, okay. So I'm sure you have heaps of advice, uh, but what would be your top? It's endless. Well, what I tell my students is that you're not going to get anywhere if you don't put the work in mm. um, because you can be an amazing natural singer. You can have an amazing vocal teacher, but if you don't actually put the work in, nothing's going to happen. You can't mm. just sit there twiddling your thumbs and expect things to just fall in your lap. Especially when there's so much competition. You've got to keep up You with have it. to be the best in your game. Yes. And the way to be the best in your game is to get the education. Um, mm. I'm so, so passionate about vocal education. Um, it's why I do it. You know, why I'm so passionate about teaching. Like I love, I love working with, with voices, you know, it, like even average voices can be great with the right training and the right tutoring. I've done it. Yeah. And um, it's just seeing them just grow. That's right. Exactly. So in terms of advice, I would say definitely get as much education as you possibly can, because no matter how natural your instrument is, you can always enhance it. Oh, yeah. And when you enhance it and you can explore all different types of genres, the possibilities are endless. You know, like I, I studied opera, but I'm not just singing opera. I'm singing opera, musical theater, pop, rock, cabaret, disco, salsa. Like I did mm. that, you know, I did Latino like ages ago. And, you know, music, uh, what did I said that. And, I, and recently I had to do like a gig where they wanted me to do like an hour set of jazz music, which it's like I never do mm. like I don't sing jazz but you know because the technique is there I was able to adjust my style so the technique is, yeah exactly mm. so the technique always stays um, so no matter whether I'm singing rock opera you know doing heavy metal or you know Puccini it the, my <laughs> technique is the same it's still that that control from the core. It's still with the ribs. It's still you know switching between registers. It's still pr you know placing the sound in certain places. Um, the only thing that changes is the style. So the main advice I would be would I would give would be education and working really really hard to get what you what you need persistence and um, and not doubting yourself as well because when you doubt yourself it just takes so much longer yeah and I can say that from ex experience post we post both can yeah exactly <laughs> as soon as you put doubt you push away that possibility and you know if I had known that 10 years ago I would be in a very different position now Mm. So, but you know, it is what it is. And um, there was that movie that we watched last night. There are no mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, we watched. We had a girls' night last Even night. Even though, yeah, you laughed about it. But anyway, <laughs> I was, I was like, like, why are you laughing? That was serious. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because it's true. Yeah. There are no mistakes. Like, no matter what you feel is a mistake, it's not a mistake. It's a lesson. Mm. And now, I, I guess, in hindsight, I see that now. At the time, I didn't. And you know, it's. It's just move, you know, just take that next step. It's like, okay, well, it's done. It's in the past. It's done. Move Close on. that chapter. Yeah. Move on. It wasn't a mistake. It was a lesson. Yeah. How do you and grow from it? Exactly. So that would and be. And to avoid making that mistake again. Exactly. Let's not remake that again. Yeah. <laughs> if you make the same mistake again, it wasn't a lesson. You haven't <laughs> learned from it yet. Exactly. <laughs> What's that? That's what that saying that they have on um, the, like, those third eye um, Instagram memes. Um, a le the the lesson will keep repeating itself until you learn it. Yes. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm a high believer in that. Totally like, same. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Preaching to the choir. <laughs> Preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> now, we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview. Aww. It's been 
way too much fun. It too has. much for an interview, really. <laughs> no, I'm joking. This is why I love what I do. Yes. <laughs> but as a closing statement, it was probably the most important question. Knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14-year-old <laughs> self? I think Whoa. she saw that question coming. <laughs> She's watched my interviews before. <laughs> okay, knowing what I know now, what I would tell my 14-year-old self is don't doubt. Don't block don't doubt and just see the vision and go for it without a plan B. There is no plan B. There should always be a plan A. Yeah. Because if you have a plan B, then you sort of go, oh, well, that's okay. It distracts you from that, plan A. Exactly. Yeah. Because you go, oh, that's okay. I can pay my bills with that. You know, or, or it's okay. I can, I can survive with that. But if you have a plan A, that blood, sweat and tears is so much more fulfilling. So I would oh, tell yeah. myself at 14, don't get a plan B. Go straight to plan A and don't stop until you get it. So, That's and don't great doubt. advice for <laughs> and all the doubt. young listeners too. <laughs> Actually, you don't even have to be young for that advice, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to in the future, the new album, Twitter it's all dates, on where my should they website. Go? So you have to spell my name. Um, Alejandra Blandino so it's like Alexandra but with a J so I have to spell the whole thing out no that's I, I never thought of it that way it's <laughs> Alexandra just with a J yeah just with a J because it's Alejandra and uh, so alejandrablandino.com and um, just find my stuff there and everything's there find me on Facebook um, but again Alexandra but with a J and just yeah there's Instagram Facebook SoundCloud I'm really bad with my YouTube I really need to get onto that but I will because that's one of my goals for this year, even though we're like almost halfway through the year. But that's okay. It's never Four too late to start. Four months into it. So good. <laughs> it's never too late to start. Exactly. <laughs> but I'll, I'll link your website too, just Fabulous. so people know how to spell it. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's not hard. I mean, like no. my surname's spelled the way it sounds. It's just Alexandra but with a J, Blandino, B-L-A-N-D-I-N-O dot com. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for coming so on much. the show. <laughs> it is a pleasure. Oh, it's just fun. consider this your second home, okay? Just come Always. back on the show <laughs> whenever you just want to. Well, not even promote something. Maybe you just want to chat about something. No, I'm here. But it sounds yeah, fun. Yeah, we got the camera. <laughs> We got the mics. Exactly. And we, we got, got the chit chat <laughs> exactly. that could last for literally hours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, for everyone watching, make sure to go grab your own copy of Alex's album, A New Life. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.